Now, Van, uh, once the scope of work is put together, you're now ready to put it out for bid. Um, I think we got the cart before the horse. Uh, it's been my experience. It's always best to have some relationships in place uh, or at least some contacts in place instead of me now having a scope of work. And now I'm running around, where in the world am I going to submit this to, right? So at whatever point in the process, what is the best way to go find good contractors that you want to submit your scopes of work to? Well, I, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, you would tell folks the same thing I'm going to tell you that e before you get uh, rolling on this, you've already created sort of your power team where you create in within the areas that you're concentrating and in, in finding properties, do investments, you have relationships with real estate brokers, mortgage brokers, insurance brokers, all those types of people that you need to have on your team. And from it's amazing once you have those relationships with those people, they should probably provide you and will provide you with references of people that they've done work in the past with. Also, Jay, you know, there, uh, we got these beautiful things called RIAs, you know, these real estate investment associations, uh, a lot of great people in them. You know, if I came across you, I'm pretty sure that if I have chatted you up and had a conversation with you, you would love to be able to share your wisdom and experience that you've had for over so many years, just like how I would. And so these are great opportunities for new real estate investors really to educate themselves to really create relationships with people who know something to join these associations. You know, there's Facebook groups. There's a lot of places where, you know, birds of a feather flock together and go to these places and you can touch, you can create relationships. And also at the same time, you will learn, Hey, uh, I need an electrician. Do you have anybody? Oh, I, I'm running into a snagger with a plumber. He's telling me to do, I'm do, looking to do this. What do you think? And, and those are the areas. That's where I would start. I would never, I hear the, I would never go to my local home improvement center and stand out there and, you know, and try to, you know, write down cell phone numbers or find people that way. That's just the wrong way to go. That's the only way for you to be able to do that is if you're a seasoned a veteran, if you're an expert, you know exactly what you're doing. Like yours truly, I could pick out people like that. And and, and immediately I can put them on a job site and determine whether they know what they're doing or not know what they're doing. But if you're not at that stage yet, you cannot go down that route. You really should focus your efforts on finding bona fide uh, individuals that will handle the work and you will, you'll have less uh, you know, problems going that direction. Absolutely. Back to the scope of work for a second there, Van. Uh, when you get a bid from a contractor, um, do you require the general contractor to line item their bid or are you satisfied with a bottom line? Well, if I have a detailed scope of work, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with them just giving me a line item. Ultimately, I, what I tell people uh, is that I would love to have a general contractor trace people include all of their material and, and in the price to just give me the bottom line. I don't want to get into going running out to buy a pail of paint for people or, or a box of tile that they're running short. It's amazing when they look after the material, when they bring it on site, how how they're you know how efficient they are. And you don't see things sprawl all over a place, uh, loosey goosey, when they're paying for it. So I when uh, starting out, that's what I recommend. Once you become experienced and seasoned, then you can turn things around and maybe you might supply material for your contractors, tradespeople. But in the early stages, when you're starting off, I strongly suggest you just get the bottom line. You have a detailed scope of work, which is included as part of the quote and contract that exists with your contractor tradesperson. And then you and, and you get a bottom line number. And that's you don't and that's all. Move on. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you.